السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Brothers, in this month of Ramadan, the Rasul صلى الله عليه وسلم in a hadith, he said that when the first night of Ramadan comes upon you, you've heard of this hadith, I'm sure. When the first night of Ramadan comes upon you, that the devils are chained, and the disobedient jinn, they all chained, and the doors of the hellfire are all closed, not a single door remains open, and the doors of Jannah are all open, not a single door remains closed, and there's a caller who calls out, and the caller says, Ya baghi ya khayr aqbil, wa ya baghi ya shab aqsil. O doer of good, come forward, and O doer of evil, withdraw, get back. Wa lillahi wa taqa min al-na, wa dhalika kulli layla. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this month of Ramadan frees people from the hellfire, from going to the hellfire or being resigned to the hellfire. Allah frees them from them. And that happens every night. There's a number of people that Allah frees from the hellfire. But this, this hadith is pivotal in the sense that it reminds us of our return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What we call in Islam, Tawbah. Tawbah is when you make that U-turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on all the things that you've done in your life or not done. And you make a U-turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, Tawbah is something that is so important that some of our scholars, they even said that if a, a person thinks that, to emphasize that how important is Tawbah, some of our scholars, our pious predecessors, they said that a person who does not do Tawbah or doesn't believe in Tawbah, doesn't believe that Tawbah is obligatory, then they're like a disbeliever. They're like a disbeliever. That's how critical it is to do Tawbah. And one of the scholars, they even said that most people are ignorant of the, of the knowledge of Tawbah that how to do Tawbah and the whole institution of Tawbah. You know, people, and there's no punishment more severe on a believer than not knowing how to do Tawbah. There's no punishment more severe on a believer than not knowing how to do Tawbah. Brothers, the Qur'an is replete with references to the issue of Tawbah. Constant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us to return back, to call, you know, to, He's calling us to come back. You know, like the Ya Ibadi, you know, my servants, you know, He's calling us, calling us back. In the Quran, there is a phrase that is repeated probably 140, 150 times. That phrase is Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amin. Oh, you who believe in the plural. It's like a, Allah is inviting all of us that, oh, you who believe. And whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses that phrase in the Quran, it's usually an order that He has given us. In other words, it's not that we have a choice, it's that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ordering us do this or do that. So, the very, very last time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses this phrase, Ya Ayyuhun Ladina Amanu, is in Surah 66, Surah Al-Tahrir, Ayah 8. And it's interesting how, what Allah focuses on in the very last time He calls upon us and He says, Ya Ayyuhun Ladina Amanu. So in Surah 66, Ayah 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Ayyuhun Ladina Amanu, إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْبَةً نَصُوحًا 
عسى ربكم ان يغفر لكم ذنوبكم. آه نعم آه عسى ربكم ان يكفر عنكم سيئاتكم ويدخلكم جنات تجري من تحتها الانهار. Perhaps oh, uh, oh you believe sincerely repent to Allah tawbatan nasuha genuinely sincerely repent to Allah perhaps Allah will wipe away your sins and will admit you into paradise beneath which rivers flow tajri min tahtiha al-anhar the point brothers is that this issue the last time that Allah mentions this, He talks about Tawbah, indicating how important it is and its obligatory nature. That is obligatory upon us to do Tawbah as often as we possibly can. And the two goals that you can see right away, as mentioned in the ayah, is that number one, to wipe away our sins, because that will lead to the hellfire. And in this month, Rasul pointed out that Allah frees people from the hellfire because they're doing tawbah, they're asking Allah for forgiveness. As a matter of fact, Rasul he said, you know, that uh, may that person be humiliated or disgraced upon whom Ramadan comes, Ramadan comes upon them and they go through Ramadan but yet they're not forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They didn't seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they should. So, seeking repentance, asking Allah for forgiveness, obviously is a critical concept for all of us. And you can see the two goals here in this ayat of our life, to wipe away our sins and to be admitted into Jannah. Because you cannot enter Jannah unless the sins are wiped away. You can only enter Jannah if you're pure. So, in terms of wiping away our sins we must understand that as human beings we are composed of a lower element and of a higher element in other words we're, we're, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us from dirt and because of that we sometimes get attached to this world, to this dunya but then yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a soul that can become better than the angels so we can be worse than the animals, or we can be better than the angels, depending on how we discipline our soul. Depending on how serious and genuine and sincere we are in seeking tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then when it comes to Jannah, each one of us is going somewhere. In the end, when we pass away this life as we know, it's not finite, it's not, it's not the end. The end is in the eternal life, whether it's the hellfire or it's heaven, whether it's Jannah or Jahannam, we're going to end up in one of those two places. And each one of us has to wonder that when we go to the grave, what are we going to face? When we're laid down in the grave, what are we going to face? Jahannam or Jannah? When we go to the hereafter, on the day of judgment, what are we going to be facing? What's our predicament? What's our situation going to be? This is the time to think about it before we don't have any moment to think about it. And hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al Imran, He tells us in 1 ayah 185, Whoever is repelled from the hellfire, is freed from the hellfire, and is given admission into paradise, they are the ones who achieve real victory. They are the ones who really triumph. And this life of this world is but enjoyment of delusion. This worldly life is very it's a, it's, it's delusional. It's, it's not real. It's just, it, it, it's just there temporarily and then it's gone. So the point for today but this is that Tawbah is essential. And if, if you're ever going to do Tawbah, this is the month. 
this is the month to do the tawbah. And tawbah is done from many different things. And inshallah, hopefully, if Allah permits, we will talk about it more and in more detail. Tawbah from what? Our sins, but in what type of sins are there? You know, there are major sins, there are minor sins. There, you know, there's tawbah from hypocrisy and nifaq, there's tawbah from shirk, there's tawbah from kufr, there, there's tawbah from laziness, there's, you know, there's tawbah from tawbah, believe it or not. You know, because a lot of times our tawbah needs tawbah. The tawbah is not complete. And we're just saying, you know, a question like, is it enough just to say, astaghfirullah? What are the pillars of tawbah? It's, it's, a, it's a whole science in itself. It's a whole institution in itself. It's this whole issue of tawbah, which most Muslims are really clueless about. They're unaware of. So, inshallah, um, let's begin thinking about the obligatory nature of tawbah, the how important it is, how crucial it is, how how obligatory it is, and how we should do the tawbah. Remember, remember this briefly. Inshallah, we'll explain it more later. That tawbah has four pillars. The four R's of repentance, as we say. The four R's of repentance. Number one is that you you have remorse, you know, for for what you did. You know, you 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 feel remorse. There should be a fire inside of you that you you feel that remorse inside of you. The second thing is that you resolve never to do that particular thing again. Whatever misdeed that you did, you make a strong resolve in yourself never to do it again. Number three, you remove yourself from that situation. In other words, if there's company that is all, you know, you associate with people who are always gossiping or cursing or abusing uh, or abusive or insulting other people or uh, backbiting, talk, talking about other people, and you get influenced by that, then you remove yourself from that company. If you find yourself, for example, that you're on the internet and you happen to go to, you know, some X-rated websites or R-rated websites, you remove yourself from those situations. You don't go to that. You don't turn on your internet because you're afraid you're going to go there. You remove yourself from those situations. That's the third step. If you're really sincere in your repentance. The fourth step, and this concerns Allah's creation. If you do something wrong against somebody else, you hurt somebody, you harm somebody, then you redress those wrongs as long as redressing them doesn't become a fitna in itself. Like sometimes you know you insulted somebody, so you want to redress that, and you go to that person and you see you you know you say that I, you know I, I insulted you and I'm um, I just uh, yeah, asking for your forgiveness and forgive me I shouldn't have done that. So that's the normal situation. However, if you feel that that person is going to exacerbate the situation, is going to blow it apart, is going to exaggerate, such that, that I knew you were terrible, and I'm going to tell everybody that you admitted it, and so on. Then, you know, you don't do that, but you praise that person. You say good things about that person instead. This is how you redress the wrong with other people. You, 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 uh, you, you may have borrowed a book from you know, one of the public libraries, you know, the non-Muslims. And for five years, you didn't return it. For 20 years, you didn't return it. The book is sitting in, on your bookshelf at home. So you re redress that wrong and you go ahead and you return that book. You know, this is the rights of the creation. You know, you you uh, you took on a credit card. And in the credit card, you, you refuse to pay the bill before they charge interest or whatever. And you refuse to... Uh, pay the bill. It's all those are kufar. You know, I don't need to give them back any money. You know, so that that's that's wrong. You know, you you need to give them back that money, whatever money that you, you borrowed from them. You know, uh, and and so on. You redress the wrong. So the four R's of repentance. Number one, remorse. There should be a fire inside your heart saying, I should have done it. I should have done it. That's that was very wrong. Number two, resolve never to do it again. Number three, remove yourself from that situation in the future.
Number four, redress the wrongs that you may have done to other people. So this is, again, I'm just saying this very briefly. Inshallah, we'll hope to explain it more in the future. Um, uh, as always, uh, brothers, thank you so much for listening. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this a beautiful Ramadan and a prosperous Ramadan for all of us. And may He make it a life-changing experience. Subhanahu wa bihamdik, ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa